Hello, Homeworthy. I'm John. Welcome to our Home in the Sky. You're watching Homeworthy, where we believe every home has a story. Like and subscribe for more. My name is John Pfeiffer Mars. I use all three names because the credits are longer that way. <laughs> anyway, Pfeiffer is my mother's maiden name in the South. A lot of times we get our mother's maiden name. And we are in my condominium, our condominium in Dallas, Texas. I am not a native Texan. I have lived here for about 35 plus years. So Dallas is really my home now. I've been here longer than any other place. I originally grew up in Northwest Arkansas in a very beautiful part of the state, the Ozarks. Where do I begin? It's a long, long story. Um, I just have enjoyed the design world. I actually started off as a theater major. I love theater and set design and costume design. I had a wonderful, wonderful costume designer who had us do uh, interior renderings of, of uh, rooms based on different plays. And so I loved the study and the uh, architecture and the time periods uh, and learning the different styles of furniture, that was very exciting to me. And then I sort of got into the world of interior design. In Arkansas, you're probably, at that point, there weren't that many interior designers that I knew or would, uh, would deal with. So my world came through the magazines and I followed people that I loved. I devoured each issue of, um, Oh, Architectural Digest, um, House Beautiful, whatever I got, I would devour them. Probably the most life-changing thing was I was scouring the library and I found a copy of AD and Chanel's apartment was on the front cover. And I think it changed my life. That chocolatey brown suede sofa, the Coromandel screen behind it, I don't know, I just couldn't get over it. And so I was fascinated by interior design and what interior design is all about or decorating, I liked it all. So what am I about? I'm about trying to give the client a space that they really enjoy, that is more of a reflection of them than me and is something that they enjoy coming home to and enjoy living in. I think uh, the biggest thing was a spectacular view over Park Cities of downtown. And there's never a time that I don't enjoy looking out the window and seeing the view. So a lot of people say, well, you don't have a fireplace. Well, I don't, I wish I did, but I don't, but who needs one? I have a view and I think that sort of takes the place of the fireplace. Then we like our stuff, so we like looking at our art and uh, the things that we enjoy living with. This is the entrance way. I'm a little old fashioned. I kind of like to have an entry. I don't like just walking into the living room or in this case, the dining room. So even though it's small, the unit actually has an entrance, which gives you a chance to have a piece of furniture or something to, as a focal point when the guest arrives. Uh, here's a monumental piece of Parian ware that I just love. And so uh, she became the focal po point of the entrance hall. And then I do enjoy a combination of old and new. I love antiques, but I like to interject more contemporary artwork. And I think it gives it a fresh look and keeps the uh, residents from looking like an antique shop or kind of old and tired. So in this case, um, I have a nice collection of uh, Paper pieces, this is a Pat Steer and a Victor Vassarelli, and both of these are modern looking, even though they're actually not that 
current, but they are very modern looking. And then I think it's a nice contrast to the more traditional pieces of furniture. So even though the entrance hall is small, you sort of get a feeling of walking into a space that is <clears throat> lower ceiling and lighted sort of dimly. And then you turn the corner and come into the dining room, which probably wouldn't be my first choice, but um, in these units, they're configured where the dining room is at uh, this particular spot. We do have a pretty good sized dining room, which enabled us to have a lot of furniture in here, which is good. <clears throat> You'd think we had big dinner parties, but um, actually we're more cocktail people, have a little cocktail and then go out to dinner. Dallas is full of great restaurants, so there's no need to um, actually cook. Besides, I don't know how. So <clears throat> anyway, um, the dining room, we chose a skirted table because the room was a little too leggy. And it seemed like it was all brown furniture and leggy and needed the softness of some fabric plus the fact it's great storage underneath. So do not ever lift up this table skirt. It's full of stuff underneath it. But it gives a nice space for books and for um, just flowers and things that we enjoy, you know, collecting. So speaking of collecting, you know, you're entering a collector's home and uh, collections are what it's all about here. This is a collection of um, English ironstone, which I started, oh, years ago. It's uh, circa about 1870, something like that, and it's called Etruscan vases. You know, if it's over $30, it's a vase, not a vase. So anyway, <clears throat> I, I love this pattern, and I just think it's so pretty. It's very classical. And um, it has this luster, copper luster border. It's just such a pretty piece. I found one piece years ago, and I thought it was the only one in the world. And then I found two, and then I found three, and then I found four, and then I found a giant dinner set of 144 pieces, which uh, found this cabinet to house it all, uh, store it, and also display it. People ask me, well, do you serve off of it? And I'm like, are you kidding? No, but I could. Um, it's fun to use for you know, serving little sandwiches or something. So I easily could, but I typically don't because it would ruin my display, right? This is a great piece because um, it has a rather Ampere style or look to it, but it's super storage, so linens can go in here and other tableware here. And then it had this great display cabinet or space for the transferware, which I love. And then it was kind of an awkward height, but it became a great surface to uh, put a collection of um, other pieces, Parian ware, um, which we kind of like the more classical Parian ware pieces and some of these aesthetic movement uh, transferware vases and such. Uh, I just think they're very interesting, and it kind of gives you a nice tablescape, even though it's not a table. China cabinetscape at the very top, I suppose, which makes it fun. Um, anyway, so that's kind of a collection that I really do enjoy, and you'll see tons of it. You'll probably be sick of it after this tour. James Campbell, uh, I share this place with him, and he's uh, my toughest critic and uh, someone that has a really good eye. He's very much into art, and so, and he's also my toughest client to deal with. I put the chairs pointing outward because it's so awkward with a skirted table to scoot a chair up. So, you know, if you do this, it just looks stupid to me. So I think it's more interesting to have them placed outwards like this, plus this room with a big party can get a lot of use. These scoot away from the table and we do a buffet here and then it just becomes extra seating that people want. And then the other thing, the carving on these chairs, it's really, really pretty. And I just like looking at that when I walk around the table. So that's kind of the reason. I think it's practicality. I don't really like to eat around skirted tables because of scooting my knees up into the fabric, so unless they're split, 
and designed in such a way to accommodate a, a dinner guest, then I think it's a little bit awkward. But you know, rooms can get too leggy easily, and I think a skirted table uh, really makes a big difference. And you're seeing sort of a, a resurgence of skirted tables right now. For a while, nobody did them, but now it seems to be coming back. And um, <clears throat> so, oh goodness me, here's my book right here on the table. So I think this is fun because that is the cabinet and this was the shot for the cover of the book, which I always wanted from day one because I think it just talks, it says, this is me, this is what I like. And I love living with the things that make me happy and I wanna look at them and I want to enjoy them. So. The book is all my clients that are collectors and have different collections. And I don't care what you collect, as long as you collect something. And most of the time, I get the job of making the collections look good, figuring out how to like the collections, how to display them, how to edit them. And that's my job. And that's really, really what I like. So there you go. There's the book. We found this console table and it needed a lot of restoration. I added the antique mirror at the bottom, which I think gives it a little bit of a, a sparkle, even though it's antique mirror. And then it's a wonderful shelf, which becomes a, uh, dis another source of display for the uh, large Etruscan platters and um, pitchers. You know, it was so fascinating how they just made every kind of tableware piece. It's, it's very, even uh, not only tableware, but many times they did uh, bedroom pieces, uh, chamber pots, so forth, so on. So um, it's really interesting. I have little butter pats over here that are about this big with the same pattern. It's just, you know, you find something that you like and kind of makes you happy. Maybe it's the color. Maybe it's the um, arrangement of the classical vases and such. I don't know what it is. It just made me happy. And it does whenever I look at it. I actually have other sets and other colors, too, but we won't even go there. I keep this one in here. OK, <clears throat> now to my vintage stone fruit. I don't know how I got off onto this, but I did, and um, uh-oh, there's a boiled egg on the top, which, you know, I thought about getting into other things besides the fruit, and I wasn't going to do it because it was just too much to think about. But then I found this boiled egg, and it was so cute, and I loved it. So somehow it's ended up on top of the cherries and the nuts and the grapes. And these are vintage. You know, they're all made in Italy, and uh, some of them are probably from the oh, 19th century, and most of them are probably very early 20th century. The sliced fruit are very hard to find and uh, I think are very interesting. So here's a pear that's sliced. It's just so pretty, and I like looking at it. And it kind of gives you a dining room feel. But oh, and here's a peach half with the, um, whatchamacallit, in the middle. Love that. So that's the little collection of stone fruit, which I have here. And I think we've got some out at the, um, we have a place in the country. And that's probably more appropriate there. But I like them here, and I don't want to lose them. I like this traditional console with the Vasarelli over it. I think this makes a really nice composition. And as a designer, we all have um, an eye for composition. And so I like the old with the new. I like the colors. I like the white of this. Um, this is a little Henry Moore piece. This is a Dallas artist, Anne McGuire, that I just love her work. And we fall in love with something and then buy it, or we're always shopping for something for this particular space. And so we saw Anne's work and decided that was it. I think I need something over here, but I haven't just really I haven't found out what that is yet. I will someday. So actually, can I, I can still shop, I suppose, for one more piece of art over there. That kind of takes care of this. Oh, these are fabulous. These are called grotesques. And um, they're kind of these weird, this one's, uh, these are actually bronze. A lot of times they make them out of spelter. But the bronze ones, um, 
are really finely detailed, and they're just these weird little characters and they're candlesticks, and so I, I thought about buying more of them, but I sort of left that alone. I thought, I'll just keep these two. You know, it's important to learn to edit and stop occasionally. So anyway, that's this side of the room. And oh, I will tell you, the table at one time got so covered with books that um, we couldn't host a dinner party, which was great, because um, it just had too many books on it. And they were just, every day a book was appearing and it was becoming a problem. So we needed a pair of bookcases. And lo and behold, at auction, there's a wonderful auction house here in Dallas. Uh, Jay Garrett Auctioneers, and we found this pair of bookcases with marble tops. And lo and behold, just the perfect size and scale, and all the books that had been stacked up here ended up finding a home over here, which was great. And then I think you need some little stools and benches so that you can stack some books on them, of course, or sit on them if you want to. Um, and then the tabletop. More Etruscan, these are big serving pieces. Look at that. Is that not pretty? Mm. Love it, love it, love it. Okay, it's good to like your stuff, isn't it? Uh, a large terrain here. I have the ladle someplace. Um, so there's just all sorts of little things. Um, artwork too, again, mixing sort of new with old. Uh, a wonderful little contemporary painting we bought from a local gallery that we really love. And then traditional mirrors, which we may change those out to more modern ones at some time. I don't know. It's, it's funny to see a room evolve. I think it's a, a good room never stops growing and changing. As you know, it's just I exciting. And as you find things and you live with it or you see how your room actually works or doesn't work, like the books got crazy. So we found the bookcases, which really has have been a lifesaver. So since the dining room literally flows into the living room, uh, I really wanted a sense of separation. And I think this writing desk gives me that. It defines the two rooms, separates them. But it also gives me another great surface for display. And I love a black desk. I had a, a, an older one. Well, I had one before that wasn't as good, but I loved it, but it wasn't large enough. So I actually found this at one of my favorite dealers here in Dallas, uh, Wolf Hall, and I loved the piece. It wasn't totally Louis XV. It was sort of getting a little um, transitional, and I liked that. And it had a beautiful leather top, and I love a red leather top with the um, the uh, edges, it just really looks pretty. So um, it became a fun little display area for a little collection. I like malachite and uh, little pieces, probably some dust on that one. Um, small little things, just uh, interesting little things that you enjoy looking at, some antique books. And then, you know, I told you I was so influenced by Chanel's apartment. I have my little version of the Coromandel screen, which is certainly not a fabulous one, but I like what it does. Again, it gives you a backdrop to put things against. I think black, I probably decorate a lot with touches of black because it's a neutral, it, it, it's strong, I think it's masculine, and it really gives a room a punch that many times it needs. The screen was an awkward height. I wish it had been taller, but um, I, I found this wonderful piece of art uh, by some uh, Dallas artists that I just, uh, I love their work, and uh, Chuck and George, and they just do the most interesting things. I have the cartoon or the sketches for this piece over on the other wall. Um, and, and, and I just like what the shape does above the screen. Just the flat lines seem boring to me, so I like something up above it. And again, it was more crazy, sort of modern and, and interesting. So I think you know you want to have fun. You don't want a room that's boring. You don't want, I don't want an antique shop. I want it to be reflective of um, um, here and now. So it has new, it has old. And I think especially with the artwork, that gives it a more fun feel. The nice thing about this size room 
is it gives me two conversation areas, which it's so nice to have a room where you can have more than one seating area. So this is the main one with the sofa. And gosh, that's a sofa that I think we restyled for this room. Uh, many times I'll just take what I have and then have it redone by the upholster to give it a, a, a different look. I think it was a pillow back and we turned it into tight back. And so things like that, uh, good, comfortable seating. It's easy to um, sit down on and swivel chairs. I'm a big proponent of that. And if you want to do um, uh, sticky, uh, antique looking chairs, I think they need to be comfortable, especially for, for guys, uh, not too delicate. Um, this fellow was something that I actually bought at an auction, and um, he just was so wonderful. And um, then I found a nice pedestal for it at my friends here that have a great uh, antique shop um, in Brie Lake. And then I think the juxtaposition of the more contemporary art, Graham, Sul Graham Sutherland, Moreau, Vassarelli, and another Moreau, it just really uh, counterbalances all of the antique look. Uh, again, touch of black with the coffee table, and then just little things. This was a Dallas socialite that we bought this gilt piece at her sale, and, and it's just fun. You know, there's a lot of little shopping experiences. You take a trip, and you buy something that you love, and then you bring it home, and you always think about that trip. I don't know why, but I love pears. I bought this 25 years ago. David Sutherland here in Dallas, and I've I wanted three. I could only afford one, and he's just been a big part of my life. I don't know why I like pears so much. You saw the other stone pear over there. This one is by an artist. It's ceramic and has a little wooden stem that comes out, which is interesting. Um, a Rousseau cabinet that I have uh, always loved. They, did fine reproductions in New York, and they actually uh, had a branch here in, in Dallas. And um, so I love the look, the touch of black again. And then just a combination, a tablescape of things that we like. This is something to do with a, a loom in the little gilt piece. Um, just again, Parian. This is a, a current artist that I loved his work. It's just India ink. And it just has such great movement. And I think it's fun just leaning there. I'm not a big proponent of leaning art, but I like that one. Um, you may wonder what this, <laughs> this little table is doing over here. Um, you know, the table wasn't here. And it was nice to just look out at the view. But it seemed like we needed a place to set up a little hors d'oeuvre table. So found this at an antique shop. And uh, it's a great place if you're having people over to set up hors d'oeuvres and just to be able to serve from this. They can sort of help themselves. I prepared this for cocktails, martinis, uh, as soon as this is over. So I will probably be shaking that diligently. And then the other thing is you can take this chair and scoot the other one up. And we do dinner here uh, many times, enjoying the view close to the glass and seeing downtown. So I think that was a really smart investment we did. I thought it would be temporary, and I would take it out. But it's never left because it's so serviceable. So I think when those things happen, you need to listen to them. And um, that becomes a part of the room. The piano, we discussed. I had to deal with that because I had it, and I wanted it. And obviously, that's one of the first things you have to figure out where you're going to put the piano. Um, fortunately, the room was big enough to accommodate it. And um, then you know, just extra seating here. Again, uh, the Calder, I think, gave it a fun uh, counterbalance to all the antiques. I like the jolt of orangey red. I think that's fun. Some uh, uh, different artists that did different things. We call her the opera singer because she looks like she's getting ready to break forth into song. And um, it's just, you know, so when we have someone playing the piano and enjoying the room uh, and enjoying conversation and friends, uh, it becomes alive. People make the room come to life. I studied for years 
uh, but it's all evaporated. Now I can barely play chopsticks. But I have really talented friends that play beautifully, and so they can come over and play whenever they want to. So that leads us to the other side of the room, which is probably the most popular, the bar area. There was a bar here, but it was orange and awful, and so, well, it was outdated. It was perfectly fine at the time, but we ripped it out, and uh, this really makes the room work. Uh, the bar has a refrigerator, an ice maker, and wine cooler. Everything is here. So when guests come, uh, they will come into the room. They usually look out the window at the view, and then we'll sort of perch here on these. Uh, I had this little banquette built. This little, it's actually just an armless um, sofa built. And this becomes a really great conversation area. And I can host and be bartender and pull out the glasses and make a cocktail because I've got all of the stuff right here to make a martini or wine or whatever you want. And then I can be with my guests, I can be talking to them, and we can um, carry on and I can make them a drink at the same time. So this was the smartest thing. Um, and so if you have a big party, the people will split up. You'll have a group over there, then you'll have a group over here. But I can kind of always monitor who needs a refill or what they need. And uh, it becomes a really special little area for uh, talking, conversation, always have nibblies around here. Um, when we're not nibbling, then you know we have our little, I have a little thing for monkeys, and so we have monkeys and nuts about peonies. So thank goodness peonies are in season right now, so um, they make it fun. This is a really nice um, uh, center table that I got from Embry Lake, and uh, one of the first things that I purchased. I actually had it for my house, and I knew it was going to go here, and it was going to become this little conversation area, which just is such a nice place to, you know, enjoy your friends and sit and talk and have a cocktail. I love people coming over. Uh, we're, we're big proponents of cocktail hour. Now, I'll tell you this, um, the only bad thing is people don't know when to go home. And so then I feel like I, I've got to do dinner. And so if I can't cook, it's got to be nibbly. So now I do finger sandwiches and I bring those in. Because used to, I think you had cocktails for a couple hours and then everyone left and went on to dinner. Now they don't leave, they just stay. But you know, I love them and so that's good. It's fun to stay and have a good time. Um, but then I felt guilty because I hadn't fed them, so I had to figure out things to um, serve. I love the giant uh, cashews from Trader Joe's. We just go through them by the gross, practically. And then there was a place in town that did wonderful finger sandwiches, uh, chicken salad and tuna and egg salad and such. And I always have those on hand for a party so I could bring it out on a tray and uh, soak up the liquor. Um, you know, nuts, deviled eggs, all sorts of things like that I think are fun. Easy things, uh, the point is to have your friends over, to be able to have the fellowship and the friendship and not be too worried. We like to keep the place in enough order that we can say, hey, you want to come up for a drink before we go to dinner and I don't have to worry about things. I know everything will be pretty presentable and I could make a couple of drinks here, and then we could go out to dinner after that. So yes, it works. And this whole room works. I'm thrilled the way it works. I've used very little wall covering in the condo, but and this is one of them. Uh, I think it's Osborne and Little. It's just a little, it's like a chagrin, and it's just a lovely little texture. Quiet and art looks good on it. And the only thing that uh, I kept from the previous owner was there was a fabulous Cheryl Wagner sink and uh, onyx top and onyx fixtures and I had to have someone come and repair it and fix it all off. Uh, but I loved it. I couldn't just toss it and I kept that for the powder bath. And then we have some kind of special collections of more traditional pieces like Napoleon and his son. <laughs> Uh, Edward the Seventh uh, as a small child, and then my favorite collection 
in the whole, well, I say that about everything. But, um, okay, you've heard the song, suck a feather in his cap and called it macaroni. Well, in the 18th century, um, people went on the grand tour and they would come back a little affected from their trip, um, seeing, uh, you know, all of the wonderful things in Europe and especially Americans. And so um, this is a set of prints and they're called macaroni prints and there's six of them. And um, they're all so humorous and so funny and they make me laugh. And hopefully if a guest comes into the powder bath, <laughs> they, they can also get tickled while they're doing their business. So um, the macaroni prints I think are exciting. There's a closet in here which uh, had been a shower, but now it's a closet, holds wine and luggage. So uh, everything is sort of multi purpose. Oh, I didn't tell you, all the doors originally were orange, so I had them all removed. I had new doors done and uh, in a mahogany look of wood and then French polished. And so I think the little touch of wood uh, on the doors and I left the casings and everything white, but uh, just really made such a difference. Also, I do unlacquered brass. I like the way it ages and patinates and I, I think it's pretty. So. Some people would not like it. They would think everything has to be polished. Uh, I enjoy getting the brasso out and polish up my door levers occasionally or my, my poles on the bar. Uh, all of it is unlacquered. And I just like the way it, you know, over time sort of becomes this warm kind of golden color. If you're gonna do hardware, do good looking hardware and do overscaled hardware. I hate bad hardware and touch everything first. I always tell the client, you know, touch it, see, does it feel good? Because if you're gonna grab it every day, you wanna make sure that you like the way it feels and it uh, doesn't cut your hand or whatever. So that was the little powder bath, which is off the living room. All right, welcome to the library and the room that we probably really use the most. Uh, it's a great room to relax. Again, we have the same view as the living room with downtown and uh, a lot of just favorite pieces that we've collected and things that we enjoy living with on a daily basis. It's just a room that's a good comfortable room for living. This is actually a twin size bed. So, um, you know, you can sleep a person here and, uh, but it ends up being a day bed with all the pillows and really comfy cozy. There was originally an opening here into the living room, which didn't make a lot of sense to me. So of course, closed it up. And then I had my cabinet guy build in these bookcases with uh, large file drawers for just filing different things. And this is a great place to curl up with all the pillows and put a little throw on your feet and lighting so you can read a book, whatever. And then uh, just a collection of prints. Um, I think these are from Sweden. And then um, I don't even know where those are from. We bought that, I think, at an antique sale or something. So the books, you know, books are really a big part of uh, giving a room character, I think. And then anchoring it with this rug, which I had, I think it was in a bedroom of another house and it just fit in here like a glove. And then uh, we found this antique partner's desk and it was really a great find because it let both of us sit in here and use the desk if we wanted to. I'm a big proponent of slip covers. And so this sofa, this is all a slip cover. It's a wonderful uh, fabric. I think Oscar de la Renta did for uh, Lee Jofa, I believe. Anyway, I love this fabric and it's slip covered and then the chair is slip covered and then small little seat slip covers over here. We actually have the fabric for this but haven't slip covered them yet. But I think it's, um, I love slip covers. You can either have a summer winter look or you can just double the wear. I'm always sprawled out here. Watching TV, there is a, people say, where's your TV? Well, it's right there. There's a television there so we can watch movies, whatever there. And then uh, it's just a place of all of our favorite books, magazines, things that, you know, we constantly look through and enjoy seeing and pictures and more collections, of course. Um, 
Um, I was left a lot of first edition really nice books by a dear friend, and so they're in here and more Parian. I like the Parian bus, you know. Parian was the uh, poor man's marble, a big Victorian item, and they did almost everybody as a bus from Queen Victoria to um, Lincoln to um, the Veiled Lady, uh, which I loved. Um, I, a client found this, a dear, dear, dear client, and um, his wife gave it to me after he passed away, and it's just a wonderful, wonderful thing that I love. Again, memories and, and art and things that we've enjoyed. Um, I think James's family had those lamps, and so they've ended up in here. And then more books and just family pictures. And then the top shelf I did um, Perry and Bus. So those are all um, just different things, like from different trips. The center one here, uh, we bought in Ireland, brought back on the airplane, and so everything kind of has a memory. And then just a, a different combinations of bus, 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 but I think they look kind of fun. I started off saying, nothing on the window seal. I just don't want to go there. But of course, it happened. And suddenly, the window seal started collecting things. It's a nice, deep one. So it's just natural. And uh, that becomes uh, another little tablescape, I guess. And you know what? It's OK. If you're happy and it makes you feel good, I'm all for it. You know, there's too many magazines, too many books. But it's just the way life is and I think it makes a good little cozy room that you feel comfortable in or at least we do. There are blackout shades here. You, they're motorized and so you can darken the room for television and then there's a, a layer of um, like a wool shear that can be drawn to for uh, diffusing the light. Everything in a high rise is about light. And a lot of people don't think they need curtains, but you do, because everything fades. Or you have your windows filmed or treated. And it's very important that you are aware of that. Because the sun is not your friend in, uh, for your fabrics and even your books, too. So you have to be careful. This is the primary bedroom, and it's a small bedroom, and it's dark, but it's really great for a collection. And actually, it's James's collection of 19th century watercolors. And they're really fabulous, but they do not need bright sunlight. So it's a wonderful room because it's tucked away. And um, even though there's a really great wall covering, which you can hardly see because there's so much stuff hanging on it, um, it's just a combination, almost floor to ceiling, of these wonderful watercolors. Um, every kind of subject matter, a lot of cattle and sheep and different things and different artists. Um, so it's, it's a, um, a room, again, full of collections. Uh, I love silhouettes. This was, <laughs> this was me when I was a kid. You know how your mother would drag you to uh, some place to have a silhouette done. And uh, maybe that's what started it. And then I just kept adding silhouettes and um, old and new ones, a pair of really fine ones over the bed with the full length. I think uh, that's interesting. I like the composition, too, over the bed, just to uh, sort of uh, um, give it a focal point or a focus. And uh, then these are all built-ins, which I added. There's a structural column here. And so I took the space that was left over and did, I wanted it to look like a paneled wall, but it actually opens up for storage um, for linens. I guess this one opens over here. You can tell how many times I open it. I like a darker bedroom. I like a bedroom that is peaceful. And um, I will tell you about one of my favorite things. Again, I keep saying my favorite thing. But my grandmother, Mars, that I love dearly, uh, left me her old brown secretary, uh, probably from the 40s, and it was nothing special. It arrived one day, and I thought, what am I going to do with this? And about a month later, this gal came to my office, and she did wonderful faux finishes. She had a, a sample board, and it was the bird's eye maple with an inlay of wood and touches of ebony. And I said, wow, that is incredible. Why don't you take the secretary 
and just faux the whole thing, uh, do a faux bois finish, which is what she did. So she had it for a year, I guess. I didn't know if I'd ever see it again. And one day it arrived. And, you know, it's great. It's just everything I love. It was hers, and it means the world to me. And now it's sort of reborn in this new, fabulous finish. And it really became a wonderful, wonderful decorative piece that I truly love. I looked at this in an antique store for years, and I thought, that poor little old ugly lady, but she is so ugly, she is just adorable. And uh, so finally I had to bring her home and uh, I've given her a nice little spot. And I think she's very happy up here. She seems like she is. She hasn't jumped off the wall or anything. I was just going to say that the thought process in the renovation of this place was, um, I kind of wanted a pre-war building look and so the tile the marble i i wanted sort of an old pattern and i i love marble thresholds that separate the wood floor each room has its own pattern there's a border and um, the herringbone pattern for the wood and then the bathrooms the tile and the pedestal sink i don't know it just sort of had an old feel to me that made me think i it could have been here forever even though the building was 1966 but i said if you have a condo you can sort of make it up and come up with whatever particular style you really want to have and that's what i did I think it's fun sometimes to do an oversized painting in a small space. And this was a huge painting, which we found and was enormous and way too big. But you know what? It just made this boring little pass through become kind of a fun spot to walk through every day. Well, we can touch on the kitchen, which, you know, is tucked away uh, off of the um, off of the dining room and it was a galley kitchen and actually there was an opening for serving I suppose into the dining room well you know that went away really fast uh, we like uh, the, a galley kitchen and we like a kitchen that's sort of hidden away and actually I like preparing food in a galley kitchen because everything's there and easy and this particular kitchen um, um, we just gutted everything uh, when the inspector came. It's like, well, you know, um, oh yeah, everything's okay. It just nothing works, and so we're like, okay. So we just got rid of everything, and then um, I realized that there was uh, there was a drop ceiling, and it uh, was terrible. You know, it was the kind they did back in the '80s. So we, um, I took that out and then there was a wonderful designer I knew that lived in the building and had remodeled many, many different apartments, uh, Robert Henry, and he had great taste. And I said, Robert, you know everything about this building, so why don't I just hire you to consult and you can tell me uh, what I can do and what I can't and what's above that wall before I rip it out. So we knew there was an extra foot of space and we raised the ceiling and then it gave us taller cabinets, which are really great for uh, more storage, more dishes, of course, for people that you know don't cook but like to eat. And then everything is really built in. Um, it's clean and built in and behind doors and easy. I love this marble. It reminds me of, um, I used to see the backs of old chair, Chinese antique chairs, and they had these panels of marble in the back, and it reminded me of that. So this particular slab, I thought, was very interesting in that respect. Uh, everything's built in. It's kind of easy, and uh, it's a functional kitchen, which I like. And then um, this was kind of a little wasted area, and. So we turned it into storage for China, crystal, and everything. Because you know if you can't see it, you won't use it. So I think it's very important to be able to see what you have. And when the you know, friends are coming over and you want to do something, even, like I said, the small little tea sandwiches, um, I could look here and say, oh, gee. Oh, I haven't used these in a long time. I love those little uh, chinoiserie. And it's almost like a platinum border 
They're just fun little dishes. And I think I have six of them, which is just fine for little sandwiches. I don't have any more. Um, got them from a wonderful antique dealer, Betty Gertz, here in Dallas that uh, is no longer with us, but she had one of the best shops. And so I can see everything, therefore I can find it and use it. China, crystal, blah, blah, blah. Tablecloths are stored over there. And then uh, we just did a pocket door with uh, the frosted glass so that it sort of gave me the feeling of lighting in here. Uh, didn't know really what was behind it or you wouldn't really know. And that's kind of the kitchen, you know, you got a TV and um, that's pretty much it. Our home is a sanctuary. It's a place where you come at the end of the day and you're surrounded by all of your memories and the things that you love and enjoy and make you happy. So it's a place of peace and calm and hopefully it's a reflection of, of all of the things that, of your life probably. Uh, I just think it's really important. I love rooms full of memories, rooms full of things that you love and that really make you happy. We're always flattered if someone comes over and likes the condo, mm. but it doesn't really matter because it's really doing it for, um, for me, for us, making it a space that we really enjoy living in, surrounded by all the things that we love. Thanks for watching. For more homeworthy content, be sure to like and subscribe.